lot going on, a lot going on. Got the bibster back together pretty much. Took a Charlotte over the weekend. Also resurfaced the whole thing. So if you notice, it's actually a little extra shiny. Wiring, next few weeks, wiring and fuel system is all I care about. I wanna get this thing running. Get it fired up, the clutch, the clutch cable, the brakes, all that stuff works. So if I can get this thing fired up and running, I should be able to kind of move it around. So that's the plan, next, next couple weeks. Wiring, fuel system, try to get it fired. But in today's video, I'm gonna work on the air system in the shop. So uh, if you kind of are a normal viewer of the channel, I picked up this Quincy compressor a while back from Northern Tool and Equipment and a Maxline air setup. Goodies, baby, goodies. I love some goodies. So I'm gonna start working on that. Gonna kind of lay that out, get that thing moved where I want it. Initially I wanted it outside. I think I've changed my mind though. And I will tell you why uh, I'm gonna try inside first. This episode of the Fab Forms is brought to you by Northern Tool and Equipment. Northern Tool and Equipment is family owned with over 120 stores nationwide. It's a great place to gear up providing service for hardworking pros and serious DIYers. Northern Tool and Equipment also provides expert parts and service plus a repair team in all stores who can get your equipment tuned up and running right. Visit northerntool.com for a store near you or just shop online. So, I guess I wanted to take a second and try to give you an idea of what I'm thinking as far as setting this whole air system up, uh, what my previous plans were and what my current plans are. So originally, I wanted to put the compressor outside. I wanted to build a little compressor house for it. You know, pour some concrete, put it outside. A little compressor house with some insulation, mainly for sound. That way you wouldn't even hear it running out there. It wouldn't be an issue. And secondly, I didn't want to give up any square footage in the shop. I value my square footage in here. I felt like a compressor would kind of take up some of that. Now, the more I got to thinking about it though, there's two reasons why I've changed my mind. For one, it's the amount of work that's involved in putting the compressor outside. Pour a concrete slab, you gotta build a compressor house, you have to do all this stuff. When, if I just put it over there in the corner, I could still kind of build a house around it, maybe even theme the house like a water closet or who knows, some kind of theme to it where it could dampen the noise but it's not outside. And the reason I think I've changed my mind about it being outside is, uh, well, two reasons, obviously, like I said, the work involved, the second one is humidity though. So when it comes to putting an air system in, you wanna take out as much of the moisture out of the air as you possibly can, especially, uh, well, it really depends on the kind of equipment you're running, but any kind of air grinders, any kind of air powered tools, they tend to suffer when you have more uh, humidity and water in the airlines. You gotta keep them oiled, which you should keep them oiled anyway, but the drier you can make the air, the better off you're gonna be. Now this is really important when you start using plasma cutters, uh, plasma table, which I have on the way. Um, you're doing some kind of bead blasting, some kind of sand blasting. You don't want any moisture in there. It's gonna clump. And so you wanna take all that out. I plan to have a good air dryer in here. Plus the way that I'm gonna run the system, I can also bleed moisture out of the lines. But if the compressor's outside, it's basically pulling in all that humid air. And it rains all the time here. And when it's not raining, it's hot and hum humid, unless it's wintertime. And so the more I thought about it, I was like, man, you're running all that humid air through the compressor itself, which is not that great for the compressor. And then as soon as it comes into the building, it's really cold, not really cold. It's much cooler in here than it's gonna be outside, especially when I put air in this place. It's instantly gonna condense that air. Any kind of humidity that's in there is gonna then turn into droplets and it's gonna basically rain out in those lines. 
The easy fix for me on that was to just put the compressor in the inside. I'm basically pulling in the same air, ambient air, that's gonna be compressed and put through the shop. Doing that, still gonna be pulling moisture out of the air, but it's gonna be a lot easier to dry and uh, less work for the air dryer. So that's the basic plan. Compressor's gonna go in the corner. I figure worst case, if I just hate it over there, I can always move it outside. It won't be that big of a deal. Compressor's going in the corner and then I'm gonna run the lines strategically in the shop for now. Uh, pretty basic. So with the max line air setup, I got three of these manifolds and I plan to buy more and add some more through the shop, which is really the, gr the best reason to go the system like that because it's easy to add on as you go. So I've got three of these manifolds. So initially this is how I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna put one way over here. So the compressor is gonna be in the corner. Right here I have my planishing hammer. I'm gonna drop one right there. I also have my welding table. So if I need to kind of tie into an airline, a grinder, um, yeah, anything really on that table, I can do it. So I'm gonna drop one on this post right there. And then I'm gonna come down this. I'm gonna drop another one on this post here. Actually, I may go over one side because the plasma table is gonna sit here. So that will fuel the plasma table uh, and anything else that I need to do from there. And then tee it off. It's gonna come all the way over here. I'm gonna drop another one right there. That's where the blast cabinet's gonna go. And then what I'll probably do is over here at the beginning, basically where most of my fabrication happens, I have a hose reel, I'm mounting it up high, I'm gonna tie it into the system as well. And so if I need to kind of stretch that thing out, use it around the shop, the hose reel itself will be what I use. I also figure that would probably be the easiest routing for me. So that's the plan. Now one thing I am gonna do, I don't have my air dryer yet, it's on back order, I'm still waiting on it. Most of you may have seen where people use copper lines uh, for drainage, and that's because the copper stays relatively cool, condenses that air, kind of rains out in that copper, they put a drain at the bottom, and they can kind of bleed off any moisture that might be in there. So I said, heck, why not? You know, not everybody's gonna have a dryer in their shop, some people may need to use this technique. I figured I'd do both. I actually have to get the lines from the compressor up to where I'm gonna start the max line setup anyway. And so we're gonna use copper. All right, so let's uh, warp ahead a little bit. Got the compressor placed. Uh, I got busy, didn't film, but I wanna kinda show you what I've done. So, moved everything too. I had this uh, cutting table over there. I got another table over there that had some stuff on it that was in that corner. Um, it's portable plasma setup. And I have no idea what I'm gonna keep, what I'm not gonna keep. I knew that this over here in this corner was all temporary. I knew that at some point I'd kind of re revamp it, so it's time. So I got this behemoth over here on the ground. I ended up just using cherry picker. It worked. All right, so specs on this thing. So this is a 80 gallon compressor, vertical compressor, seven and a half horsepower motor, um, 230 volt. And then uh, this one came from Northern Tool and Equipment. Working pressure is 135 to 175. So that's where it cycles. Uh, three quarter line coming out, which is perfect because everything I'm doing is in three quarter line, three quarter copper and three quarter max line. 22.6 CFM um, at max PSI, 23.6 at 100 PSI. So it'll be 20, 23.6 CFM at 100 PSI, which is gonna be amazing because it should run anything I've got, including a blast cabinet, which uh, I plan to purchase as soon as I get all this sorted out. 28 amps, max amps is 28 amps on this thing. Uh, pump life is 50,000 plus hours is what it says. Noise levels 80 to 85 decibels. So we're gonna try to cut that down with a little home for this thing. We're gonna make a little house for it. And 720 pounds. So not incredibly heavy, but 
I guess I got lucky because it could have squashed me. Dimensions, 37 by 24 by 74. What other kind of pertinent information do we have here? So this particular unit from Northern Tool and Equipment has a 12 month warranty on it. Read all the reviews before I got this. Initially I was actually looking at uh, some of the uh, Ingersoll Rand ones and for whatever reason, I, mean, I used to buy all kinds of stuff, Ingersoll Rand, it was always great stuff, but I don't know if, if the quality has come down or if maybe the versions that they have like in tractor supply has come down, but horrible reviews. These had really, really good reviews, the Quincy machines. So that's what I ended up going with. All right, so let's figure out these airlines. Threaded piece here for the max line to tie in. They'll go down the wall and then towards the floor. And down here it's got section of tubing to catch whatever debris or liquids, moisture with a ball valve. Then it basically turns up and goes seven feet up towards the ceiling. So now anything that condenses, any moisture that condenses in the lines will make its way down here including this long piece. The moisture should run back down, click in here, and basically purge that out. Simple, but somewhat effective. Like I said, this is probably overkill for what I'm doing because I plan on buying a dryer. Actually, I've got a dryer on the way. Uh, it's on back order, and so the second it gets here, I'll probably kind of re I'll probably tap into this somewhere, put that dryer in there as well. I'll leave this just because, but this is an option for anybody that it's not gonna have a dryer. A lot of times you'll see this, it's got multiple loops and multiple drains. So it'll go, you know, from the ceiling down, back up, over, back down. It'll kind of do that multiple times, multiple drains. Now, one thing I will tell you is that Copper is not cheap, so just what you see right here in fittings and the copper line, I think it was like close to 100 bucks. So if you're gonna make this real intricate up, down, all this stuff, you might as well, in my opinion, take that money and go buy you a nice dryer and be done with it. But it's an option. If you wanna, if you wanna use this, it works pretty good. The copper itself stays pretty cool, kind of condenses that air and pulls out some of that moisture. So I'm sure there was, there was probably some plumbers watching that were cringing in my soldering skills. Got some basic soldering knowledge. Used to do it uh, in the electrical world. Never plumbing though. But yeah, I think it'll hold it. I'm gonna leak test it too. So once I kind of get it up there, I'll uh, spray it with some soapy water. We'll see if there's any leaks. But this is kind of what I'm thinking. Something like that. Get it mounted right there. Tie that in. Max line to the compressor. Pull on the wall down. I can vent it right here. And then it'll go up and I'll tie it in. And the max line's gonna run right down the top. All right, so we're back. Another day, another dollar. Got compressor in some max line in got the copper on the wall like i said not needed but figured i'd show you every available option probably gonna put the dryer right in here somewhere i'll just cut it and yeah that's the thing that's nice about these kits is you can modify them really really easy over here everything's wired in got pressure 
have not mounted it, but that will happen. So we've got all the fittings and everything laid out. And one of the things, one of the things that's cool about this system is it comes with these little manifolds, which I've already shown you. Got the valve on there, got a little air fitting drain, but you can also do a pass through on these. And you, you know, they send the plug so you can plug these things, but what's cool is like this thing can go right there. I can use the airline right here at the welding table. I can drain if I need to, but it also passes through the backside. So then I can put a fitting on here and basically have it permanently attached to the planisher. So I can basically, yeah, all the goods. So I'll probably do that pass through setup again down there at the plasma table and maybe even the uh, bead blaster and just have nipples out into the shop if I ever need to plug into them, I can. Options, I'm all about options. If I'll use it, if I'll never use it, I'll still do it just so I have the option of using it. So I'm gonna basically put a manifold over here for the hose reel. I got this one coming down here for the planisher and the welding table. And then I'll do another one there and a fourth one down there. So it's time to start mounting those things. I'll get everything mounted and then I'll run the hose last. update time so got a lot done but still got a lot to go so as you can see got it run up there tees off comes down and then what I did is I just made a uh, couple fittings and I tied this hose reel into it so I got that mounted still got the drain I want to kind of bleed off any trash or water i can bleed it out of that line before it goes up into the hose reel and then i've got this side done so it goes up to the t but i don't have it connected yet the pass through got it ready just plugs on right there now i've got this one same deal so we got the hose the t but it's not connected yet
All right, so I think that's gonna conclude this video. I'm kind of waiting on a couple parts, which it's just gonna be this last section that comes down. I think I'm also gonna add a regulator, which is probably needed. I don't know why I didn't think about that. But that thing making 175 PSI, I don't need that much. I only need like 100 PSI all the time. So just a little recap. Got the Quincy compressor in. It's a seven and a half horse, 80 gallon. 230 single phase Got that wired in some max line goes down some copper if you guys want a dryer setup just out of copper you can go that route you don't have to probably gonna put my regulator right on here which like i said before that's the great thing about this stuff is it's easily customizable i'll just take this fitting out regulator go right in there i'll cut this back put that fitting down here and i'll be ready to go Copper up top, tees in right there, and then comes down to this manifold. I can kind of bleed off trash or water here. And then I just got a little 90 degree fitting that comes out, goes up to the hose reel. And I thought this thing was only like 25 foot, but it must be like 50 or something. It's super long, so that'd be good. Tees off, goes across, comes down this manifold, same same deal. This one has a ball valve on it. So you can turn it on and off. It's got a port for air fitting. I'll probably get like some curly hose or something. I can kind of blow off the work table or cool pieces off that I'm welding. Same deal here though. It's got a bleed. I can bleed off trash and water. And then this one has the pass through like I showed you. Goes through to my air planisher. And then Tees off again. Goes all the way down to this one. Another manifold, another ball valve. And this one has a port on it as well. So I can you know, plug some lines in if I want to fill up tires or something. I didn't put the bleed off on this one uh, because I'm gonna tie this into my plasma table. Plasma table pl is probably gonna go right here when I'm ready for it, or once I get it. Uh, and then I also figured too, at this point, you know, if I hadn't bled off everything that's in the lines, it's probably not going to be. So, plasma going to bottom, got an air set up, ball valve, and then it's gonna do it one more time. It's gonna come down this post. Instead of using a T up here, I'll use a 90. It's gonna come down, one more manifold here. Probably gonna put a blast cabinet there, so it'd be nice to have. And then I'll also put a, uh, a port on this one as well, so I can have air there if I need it. It's a cool setup. I think it'd been way easier if I didn't put it on the ceiling. If I'd have done it on the walls and not had to be on a ladder and stuff, uh, it'd have been way easier. The climbing on the ladder part kind of made it a little bit tough, especially working with those long pieces. But I mean, it wasn't too bad. All this stuff can be found at Northern Tone Equipment. I'll put some links in the description and go check it out. Also, I've got this straightener here, which you've seen me use. And this thing makes the job a little bit easier. You can kind of run that stuff through there. You pull it out and it's it's a good bit straighter now the long pieces it doesn't i mean i guess it helps a little bit but it doesn't really matter that much because you know as you're working with them you end up bending them but the good thing is you can kind of mold that thing back to where it needs to be still have a ton of hose left so i mean i'm sure i'll probably use most of this on that last section but that kit was the perfect size for what i'm doing also got another T-piece left over that I ordered that I probably didn't need. Um, there's that manifold that's going to go in that last section. And then I've got a bunch of these too. The kit actually comes with these little clips to hold it, you know, on the wall or wherever you're going to put it. I actually found for what I'm doing with the foam, it's easier just to use these conduit clips. These are just three quarter conduit clips. Um, these work really well for what I'm doing. All right, guys, there you go. I'll kind of show you an update on this thing once once I get it pumping air. I mean, it's already pumping air, but once I kind of get it dialed and I'm using it, I'll kind of give you an update. But there you go, the ultimate shop setup. That stuff's the bomb, max line, the Quincy compressor. Shouldn't have any issues with air going forward. Um, go check out Northern Tool and Equipment. They've got everything you need. All this stuff is available there. And uh, so if you're looking at doing an air setup, this is the way to go. Anyway, as always, thank you for joining me. See you guys some more next week. 
Go do work, son.